male, age 10, acute abdomen, low blood pressure, possible shock. Oh, it looks like we got a run for viscous. How the blood Look, call surgery. Look, I'm going to need you to stay in the waiting room, all right? I'll be back as soon as I can to tell you how he's doing. Sometimes you need somebody to kneel beside you. May I? Please. I'm Alexander. John Brightman. It's my son, Kyle. His appendix burst and afraid of losing him. Sometimes our burdens are so heavy that we can't find the words to express what's in our hearts. Do you mind if I say a prayer for your son? Please. You told us, Lord, if there was anything we wanted to come to you. Will we come to you now? This is John, Lord, whose heart is burdened and heavy laden. He has a son, Kyle, whom he loves very much. And Kyle is sick. Kyle is deathly sick. So we're asking you, Lord, to save Kyle. And we know you can do it through the blood that you shed for us. Heal him, Lord, and heal him now. This we ask in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Well, we've laid it out before him like he told us. The rest is up to him. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexander. Are you uh, the chaplain here? No, no. But I've come here many times, many times, but I uh, won't be coming uh, anymore, not now. What were you here to pray about? My wife, my Marjorie. She had cancer and she passed away this morning. I'm sorry. John, you are a lucky man. Marge and I, we wanted to have kids, but we never did. You have a family. You love your family, John. Love them with everything you got. And about Kyle, trust him. Kyle will be all right. Everett Wayne Anderson. <laughs> Harry Ernestine Anderson. Where's the camera? I gave it to you. It's hanging on your shoulder. You need help locating your sunglasses later. I'd be happy to help you look. Thank you very much. Kyle Alexander Brighton. Burgers coming, Pastor. Well, John, they're 
sort of a burnt offering. <laughs> and I thought Kyle ate a lot. Oh, he does, but now you've got 50 Kyles together in one place. <laughs> Reminds me of the movie The Thing That Ate Pittsburgh. <laughs> So anyway, this account is sitting there like this, like this big plum, ready to be picked off the tree. You know what your old man says? I think we should stop and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is that all about, Kyle? You're majoring in business, right? That's right, Uncle. All right, here's your first lesson. You want something to Great. Learn? Each minute Kyle talks with my brother, it takes me an hour to deprogram him. I call it Uncle Phil Detox. <laughs> all right, listen to me. Candy and I want to give you something that's eh, a little something that's real. A little going away present. Oh, ah, come go. on, Kyle. Look at it like it's an investment in your future. And remember, if you want something in life, you got to go for it. Come on, Kyle, pull harder. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were right, Terry. I didn't think it would work, but sure enough. <laughs> Good kid, Kyle. I like you. <laughs> did you see what Phil did to Kyle? You and Phil are just like your dad. Always. Don't ever say that. Phil's like dad. I'm not. Hey, this is me. Remember the one who was on your side? Why can't he be committed to one woman and settle down? Look at him. He's got a different woman every time we see him. John, Phil, it's not your responsibility. Let God handle it. Never winded. Well, you know what they say about growing old. No, what do they say about growing old? Actually, they don't say anything at all. But I do remember you saying that I'm the one who's growing old while you stay the same age. That's true. Yeah. You're a cradle robber, and I'm going to go back. You want me to go with you? No, 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 no. <laughs> you need the exercise. You know what they say about uh, middle aged men? What do they say? The legs are the first to go. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're gonna be okay? I'm fine, fine. I, I may lie down a bit, but I'm fine. All right. See you in a while. Kyle? Oh, you forgot Johnny. Ma, I, I don't need Johnny. Oh, but you've always taken him. I know, but keep him here. I'll be home lots of weekends. Don't worry, we're with big bags of laundry, so things aren't going to change that much. I love you, sweetheart. I love you too, Mom. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll tell you about what worries me. What's that, Dad? Well, you letting yourself be influenced by your Uncle Phil's school of business. <laughs> Dad. Now, remember, living by God's principles is not exactly on the top of his list of priorities. Dad. Now, even though he's my business partner and my brother, we always don't see eye to eye on things. Dad, don't worry. I'm not as dumb as I look. Dad, I can see what's going on. Don't worry. I love you, son. I'm proud of you. I love you too, Dad. See you, Squirt. I'm almost 16. You can't call me that anymore. OK. Try not to flunk out of school this year, OK? Oh, right. And how many academic scholarships did Mr. IQ get? <sighs> huh? Now they decide to get along. Now get out of here, will ya? I love you guys. Fight you for his room? Don't you mean my new study? No! <gasps> They're right in the palm of our hand. All we have to do is squeeze them a little bit. Come on, John, use that charm of yours. Oh, now, will ya? Don't use such a big club. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, you don't have to steamroll every deal, Phil. I want you to walk a little softer on this one, OK, for once. It's the way to do business. It's the way you do business. It's not my way, not like the Callahan deal. What about the Callahan deal? You promised him the world, then we couldn't deliver. No firm could. You misled him, Phil. Lied, really. Ooh, here comes the moral police again. Yeah, I lied. Everybody does. 
if our word is no good, we can't expect their word to be any good, then nobody is committed to the deal on either side of the table. We do not approach this deal that way. Fine. Would you mind knocking? What are you wearing? Stuff for school? Well, you can just take it back to wherever you got it. You're not gonna go out of this house dressed like that. Why not? All the girls dress like well, this. Well, you're not going to dress like this. What do you want me to do? Wear skirts just to my ankles? Do as I tell you, Terry. That's enough. Look, just because you're baby left for college doesn't mean you can take your frustrations oh out of in here all the time. Like, I don't know. I just do nothing. How was your day? Good, I think. We're waiting to find out any time about that Atlantic Petroleum account. We're really close. Oh. Where's the mail? I don't know. Maybe Terry has it. Has what? The mail. Hello? How could I have it? I just got home. You're kidding. That's great. We got the account. Oh, wonderful. Well, I found the mail. It's right here where it should be. Next to the margarine. How did it get in there? Uh, hold on a second, Phil. Don't look at me. Well, I didn't put it in there, John. Helen, don't look at me. Had to be you. Unless the mail carrier decided to put it in there. Helen, you're getting nuts on us. <laughs> she put the mail in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Probably trying to free some of my assets. At least what I've got. Well, this is great. Our next speaker was awarded Harrison Elementary's Teacher of the Year this spring. I've heard rumors she might run for school board next year. And I want to go on record right now and say that I will personally campaign for anyone who runs against her. <laughs> because we simply can't lose her as a teacher. Please welcome Ellen Brighton. And, and after six long months of hard work from all of us. Uh, maybe I not think... all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think we finally reached the next plateau with Atlantic Petroleum. This time we finally struck oil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, if you'll open uh, your presentation here to page Every one. teacher had someone as supportive as Valerie, this profession would be a lot easier. I'd, I'd like to... I'd like to, um, I'd like to talk to you today. I'm, I'm, I must need glasses. I, I can't, I never thought I'd need glasses. <laughs> um, I, oh goodness, uh, I'm sorry, Valerie, I'm, Well, it isn't cancer. That much we know for certain. No sign of a brain tumor that might have caused you to collapse. Oh, thank God. But I'm afraid the news isn't good. All of our tests are pointing in one direction. Ellen, we believe that you have a form of dementia. It could be Alzheimer's disease. What? That, that, that's 
ridiculous. Alzheimer's is an old person's disease. You're right. In the vast majority of cases, it strikes people over 65. But a very small minority contract it much younger. Your test results indicate a 90% probability that you have the disease. Well, what about the other 10%? Shouldn't we get a second opinion? Of course, we want you to. Nothing would make us happier than to be proven wrong. Look, we can fight this. Maybe they're wrong. They're not wrong. Sweetheart, we'll get everyone at church to pray. We can face this together. Together? What are you talking about? Pretty soon, you are going to be the one who's going to be facing things all by yourself, and I'm going to become more isolated, more alone. No, we won't let that happen. The children and no, I won't... No, you're not going to tell the children. Ellen. No, I don't want Kyle and Terry to know. Why? <sighs> I want my life to be normal for as long as possible. Look at Terry, she doesn't even listen to me now. If she thinks I'm brain dead, I'll lose her completely. So please, promise me, don't tell them. You've been, I've been paging you all afternoon. We, we had a doctor's appointment. Again? For who? Are you both okay? Oh, the appointment was for me. I'm fine. Just some tests. I feel fine. Sorry I stole John from you for a while. Terry. Can you stay for dinner? Uh, no thanks. I'm just gonna talk to John for a second. So oh, what's up? So what's up? Just the biggest deal of our lives. Hello? I needed to contact you today. They invented pagers just for that purpose? Remember, they go on your belt? Phil, there are more important things in life than this deal. Such as? I needed to be with Ellen. Who are you with today? Uh, gee. Clients? I'm sorry. I'll try not to let it happen again. Want to stay for dinner? No, I can't. I got a hot date. I'm going to tell Barbara today. Good. I'm glad you need to tell someone. So do you. how much I miss her, even now, my Marjorie, after all these years. I've spent a lot of private time praying in these words, John. I don't know if I even know how to pray anymore. I didn't either. I agonized and struggled, I fought. But the one thing I discovered that I couldn't do was hold on to her. I had to let go. In my mind, I built an altar right here. And on it, I laid the one I love more than anything in all the world. I gave her up to him. It's all right if we wrestle with God on some things, but remember, 
we can trust his hand, even if we don't understand his plan. When all is said and done, we have to trust in him, even though our questions are not answered. Now, I've gone over the figures and everything looks fine, but what we need are the results of that land survey. Do you know anything about it, John? John? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Yes, Alex, I'll take distracted executives for 300. <laughs> he at important meetings seems frequently preoccupied and inattentive. Who is John Brighton? That's correct. Brighton Associates is now in double jeopardy. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's keep going. William pulled out the canteen and took a long drink. The water felt good as it rolled down his parched throat. Mrs. Brighton? He said parched. What? It's supposed to be parched. Oh! Yes, uh, that's parched, Jeremy. Please continue. It's Justin. Oh. Oh, of course it is. I'm sorry. Down his parched throat. Then he passed the canteen to his friends, and they each took long drinks until it was empty. Do you want me to go on, Mrs. Brighton? No, no, that, that was fine. Thank you. Um, who would like to continue? I'm not a teacher anymore. I resigned today. Valerie was just terrific. She, she said that she would get a sub for as long as I needed and that when I was ready to come back. <laughs> oh, Ellen. <sighs> Carl's coming home this weekend, and I think it's time to tell the children. drop out of college. You're gonna need help. No, Carl, I don't want you to do that. But I want to be here. You've always been there for us, and now it's our turn. We'll be fine. What I want is for both of you to go on with your lives, grow, love God. It would break my heart if you stopped doing that. You don't want to break your mother's heart, do you? What's going to happen to you, Mom? Nobody knows exactly what will happen, but I'll, I'll probably, I will lose my memory, maybe slowly and maybe quickly. I may not. I may not know you. Any of you. But if that day comes, I want you to remember that the real me is still there, loving you as much as ever. Each of us is in God's hands. And I think he wants us to live each day, each moment, 
as best as we can. Huh? So shall we start now? beautiful than when we first came here. better see to Kyle. I think he's crying. Honey? Grace, I'm your daughter, Terry. This one right here, Terry. Yeah, and that's Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. I gotta go. I'll see you this afternoon.
Are you feeling good, Mrs. Brayton? You want to get up and get dressed? No, no, no! It's all right. No, 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 It's no, all right. No, no, He's coming no, back in no. a little while. Maybe I better not go just yet. No, no. You go on ahead, Mr. Brayton. It's important. No. You have some time for yourself. Okay. Go on now. Okay. God help me. <sighs> I'm sorry. You okay? Sorry, just resting. Oh, I thought you were, well. Having a heart attack or something? <laughs> oh, this looked like I should be. No, it's not that. I, I see you running here every once in a while, but you're not very regular. Keep me track, eh? <laughs> I just happened to notice. Oh, it's hard to do it every day. Oh, yeah. I heard. Heard what? Oh, well, nothing. It's just that... What? Well, I heard that the legs are the first to go. Really? The next to go is your sense of humor. <laughs> Julie Sinclair. Sound bright. Jingle bell ring, dancing and prancing in Jingle Bell Square. In the frosty air. Oh, oh. The right time is the right, right time. time to rock the night away. Thank you, thank you very much. Jingle bell. with happiness. How's mom? On a scale of one to ten, about a minus four. How's dad holding up? Oh, you mean that guy who wanders through here every now and then? Wouldn't know, hardly ever see him. This isn't a family anymore, it's an asylum, and I get to live here. Lucky me. Look, dad's doing the best he can. I saw him this week for about ten minutes. And last week I got 15. Mom thinks I'm her cousin Grace. I don't have parents anymore. I might as well be a boarder. And it's Christmas, Kyle. Do you see any decorations? Do you see any cookies? Dad hasn't even had time to go out and buy presents. There won't be a Christmas this year. You know, maybe it's for the best. I mean, why fake it? Okay, pitiful. Let's go. What? I said let's go. What are you talking about? Come on. No, leave me alone. No. Nope. You're coming. We've got work to do. You know, you're crazy. You belong in this family. I know. Hey, hey. hey Dad. How are you? Good. Uh, hey, Ma. How's it going? Alan, it's Kyle. Oh, hello. Hi, Mom. You look great. When'd you get home? Uh, a little while ago. You ready, Squirt? Ready. What's going on here? Uh, you'll see. Okay, let her rip. Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> 
You say so. I'll tell you what to worry about. Hmm? Terry's planning to cook Christmas dinner. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And God help us. Everyone. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, look, don't worry about it. Put the windows up, have the heater on. We're going 75. You don't hair. feel it. We were not. You had the scarf on. Anyways, no. it wasn't that. I mean, in it's Florida, okay. when it's raining, you can put the scarf no. on. It wasn't that. Okay. You guys need to know that Terry is the mastermind behind this entire dinner. So, she's worked really hard, and we need to thank her. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Terry's grand opus is served. <laughs> it's nice when someone lends you a hand in the kitchen. <laughs> There's the good word. Look at that. Well, uh, let's all give thanks, shall we? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to say something first, if it's okay. Sure. Sorry. Well, um, last night I asked Cindy to marry me. Then she said yes. <laughs> All right, I finally got it. That's great. Blessings on yeah. both of you. Thank you, Alexander. Didn't realize things had gotten so serious. I know, Dad. It's just, you've been so busy, we haven't had time to tell you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Congratulations, you guys. Thanks. Well, when's the wedding? Well, um... As soon as possible. Welcome to the family. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Something to think about? Don't get any ideas. We certainly have a lot to be thankful for this year. You're absolutely right. Uh, let's pray. Oh. Father, on this Christmas day, I want to thank you for all these gifts of joy. For our children, Kyle and Terry. Everybody told me not to marry him, but I was stubborn, and I knew better. <laughs> or so I thought. <laughs> Sorry, Julia. Oh. Thanks, I appreciate you listening. Oh. You don't interrupt the way my cockatiel does. <laughs> <laughs> Once the legs are gone, what can you do but sit and listen? <laughs> <laughs>
she did! Everything is completely ruined! All right, honey. All right. Uh, let me take care of this. Mrs. Brighton, don't you like your breakfast? You need to eat. Oh, you're looking for your husband, aren't you? You don't like it when he's gone. But everything is going to be just fine. He's away on a little business trip, and he'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. It's pretty, isn't it, huh? You like it? <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm just going to fold some clothes. Senora! Senora! Mrs. Brighton! Mrs. Brighton! Mrs. Brighton! Mrs. Brighton! Brighton Associates are pleased to have the opportunity to brief you on the progress of our Southwest Corridor explorations. We first charted this region. Number 630 in your prospectus, if you'll turn to page 16. Before we get into all that, I would uh, like an explanation as to why this briefing has been repeatedly rescheduled. Uh, I'm glad you asked about that, and it is something we... Uh... How far behind schedule are we? Well, <clears throat> well, you have to understand, Southwest Corridor has never exactly been explored before, so... Southwest Corridor is a very hazardous, cavernous region of the ocean. Mr. Brighton, and this is for you, a family emergency. You do have a choice. Yeah, well, you tell me. What is it? Are the police looking for it? I assume so. Well, fine. They'll take it from here. I mean, what can you do? 
Look, we have two more hours in there and then we've got them. You can get there in two hours anyway. I've got to go home. I have no other choice. It's funny how this company never seems to be on your list of choices. How do you think they liked it? Are you kidding? You did a nice job. Thanks for pinch hitting. No problem. I can't believe John just bails on us like that. Ellen was missing. It's not like you could have done anything about it. I'm sure she's glad she married John and not you. She would have been in a nursing home a long time ago. That's right. the question. <laughs> no! No! Take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats. Ellen. Take your seat. Take your seat. Ellen, it's me, Valerie. Take your seat. Take your seats. Take your seat. Ellen, why don't you come into my Take office? Take your seats. We can sit down. No! We can sit down. No! 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 Teach. No! Valerie. No! No! for just one minute and she was gone. I'm it's so all sorry. Right. I'm not. I can't take this anymore. I'm sorry, Terry. We're all trying. Not every day, I think uh, the chaos can't get any worse. And then it does. And people keep telling me there's nothing more I can do for my wife. That she doesn't even know who I am anymore. I should put her away in a nursing home. but. Sometimes she does know who I am. I can see it in her eyes. <sighs> I'm sorry to be dumping all this on you, but <gasps> having someone to talk to just means so much to me. Oh, that's OK. I love to hear you talk. Oh. <laughs> this time that we spend together, uh, it's just about the high point of my day. I really appreciate your friendship. You don't return phone calls. You cancel meetings at the last minute. You're not available for consultation. And every time it happens, you apologize, but nothing changes. And aren't you the one that's always preaching about how repentance is some sort of change of conduct? I'll change. The company will change. We'll rebound. Rebound? Yesterday, Robin and Doug resigned. This morning, three sales guys. You call that rebounding? Um, excuse me. May I help you? Is John Brighton here? The word's on the street, John. The accounts are getting jittery. The sharks are circling. Oh, make some calls. 
That's not enough. I need you here every day. I need your word on it. How am I going to do that with Ellen the way she is? You put her in a home for people like that. Come on, John, you're young. Get a life. She's not people like that. She's my wife. I love her. John, Ellen's dying. There's nothing you can do about that. Please, just go. Hello? Hi. Hi, John. Julia. <sighs> oh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I, oh, excuse me. Uh, Phil, uh, Julia Sinclair, my brother Phil. Hi. How do you nice do? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I was right around the corner. I wondered if you were free for lunch. Sure. And you're with? Uh, Julia, sir. Just a friend. Oh. Oh, just a friend. Good. Have a nice lunch. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I can't say I blame him. If it was anyone but family, I'd have gotten the boot a long time ago. I'm so sorry. What are you going to do? I don't know. So much of what I did was for Ellen and our future. Your future isn't over. Would Ellen want you to give up your life for her? She loved you. I know what a woman wants for the man she loves. She wants you to go on and be even more successful for yourself and Kyle and Terry. You're such a giving man. You think about everybody but yourself. But John, I'm thinking about you. If you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Cindy and I have been praying about this for a long time. We set the date for our wedding. It's a week after graduation. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you, son. I just wish things could have been different. We haven't had much time to talk. I wanted to be there for you, make sure you were ready for this. Don't worry, Dad. Cindy and I have learned more about marriage from watching you and Mom than you could ever put into words. <laughs> Let's go play another set. Julia Sinclair. She's become a, a dear friend. She's amazing. She listens endlessly to my whining. I'm just so lonely, Alexander. I try to remember what it felt like to have Ellen put her arms around me, kiss me. But the memory's fading. Every morning I see Julia and I'm alive. I'm afraid I'm falling in love with her. I love Ellen. But I just... Sometimes I can't stand the thought of 
holding her hand and just being so completely alone. Loneliness can be a terrible thing. I know, <laughs> I'm an expert. There was a time I thought I had a loneliness problem, same as you feeling now. I know the signs. But John, you haven't got a loneliness problem. I think the issue for you is trust. Are you free tomorrow night? I suppose so. Why? You'll have to trust me on this. All right? I remember that night in Temple Terrace. God was speaking to my heart. I knew that. And I remember getting on my knees on the 18th hole of the golf course. And I said, oh, God, I give in. I never wanted to be a preacher. I never wanted to be anything in the church. I didn't like the church. But I'll be what you want me to be, and I'll do what you want me to do. And that call has never left. And God has said, I want you to continue as long as I give you the strength. The voice was so distinct that I couldn't misunderstand that call. And every Christian is called to ministry. Did you know that? The word ministry means servant, service. We're called to do something for other people that are less fortunate than we are. Jesus took on himself the form of a servant, the Bible says. He said, I did not come to be served, but to serve in Mark 10. It's tough to do the will of God. We have the highest standard of living in the world. The highest standard that the world has ever known. And yet as a nation, we're in danger of leaving God out of our lives. Oh, please, God, forgive me. Forgive me for trying to do all this on my own. I need you, Lord. Now more than ever, I... The devil will always have a ship ready when a man wants to sail away from God. You see, God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for you. That's the reason he was there. John? Are you all right? Yeah. I've got to go home, Alexander. I have some things I need to do. Sure. Let's go. Through sorrow and joy, 
in sickness and in health. To love and cherish you always. I promise you this from my heart. With my soul. For as long as we both shall live. This is my promise to you. You know, up until now, I, I thought of taking care of you as a chore. But I want you to know, taking care of you is an honor, a privilege. This bed is my altar, Lord. And on it, it's the woman I love. I give her into your hands. feeling we're not going to be running together anymore. <laughs> Isn't it strange? It was your faithfulness that drew me to you. And now your faithfulness is taking you away. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. I just wanted to stop by and tell you, I am so sorry. You are absolutely right. About what? About me holding the firm back. I've given a lot of thought, and I understand now. You were right about it, and the only solution is for me to give you my share, controlling interest. What are you talking about? Yeah, I've given a lot of thought, and I just think it's best for all concerned. So, I uh, just wanted you to know that. So I'm sorry I disturbed you and... Michelle. Michelle. Hi. Hello. So, anyway, uh, have a nice day. Who was that? I think it was my former partner. I'm glad you all can make it. There's been a few changes here at Brighton Associates. We have good news. And we have more good news. The good news is that we're not going to have any more problems with John bailing on meetings and scaring away clients. What'd you do, hide his pager? <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. He stepped down from the company. What? What? you got to be kidding us. So what's the more good news? The more good news is that I'm in charge now. Um, uh, no offense, Phil, but, uh, without John, I'm not sure we can make it. <laughs> without John? Give me a break. He hasn't been here for the last three months. Come on, guys, we'll be fine. Where's the old company spirit here? Who's gonna handle the European clients? 
It took John three years to get them to sign those contracts. And they won't even talk to you, pal. I'll send them flowers. Is anybody hot in here? Look, uh, I'm with you, Phil. But I'm not sure we're going to be able to convince the others. We'll convince them. We have to. See, the laundry truck has arrived. Hey, Uncle Phil, how's it going? Okay, is your dad here? No. Why, what's wrong? Nothing. <sighs> Actually, plenty. Why? Your dad turned over the controlling interest in the company to me. Really? Yeah, really. It's been a disaster. But, but I thought that's what you always wanted. Yeah, he just dumped everything on me and split. The whole office staff is nervous. Some of them have quit. I'm afraid if I tell the clients, I'm gonna lose a lot more than just employees. He knows how valuable he is to this company. He can't just do this. Look, Dad's been under a lot of pressure lately with Mom and everything. You know, there's a lot of professional people and places that can do a much better job of taking care of your mom than your dad has. You haven't even seen him with her. Are they gonna put one and a half teaspoons of honey in her tea just the way she likes it? Are they gonna redo her out of the Bible and brush her hair every night? Do they even know what her favorite color is? Look, Uncle Phil, I, I love you a lot. I always have and I always will. And I appreciate the things that you've tried to tell me about life, but you gotta understand something. My father, he lives every day according to the principles of the Bible. Now, I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but I gotta ask you, what principles do you live by? If you want to find Dad, he's probably at Alexander's. And so I did what you said, Alexander. I let go of everything I could think of. And I let go of Ellen. I gave her over to God. I feel peace. Thanks, Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were here. Well, I heard John spilling his guts. I didn't think I should interrupt. Man, what is going on with him? He let go of the business. He let go of Julia. He let go of Ellen. He doesn't have anything left. I mean, how do you get peace by letting go of everything? I thought you get peace by having everything. Well, it's easy enough to understand, but not so easy when you try and do it. And I think what matters is to recognize that it takes someone bigger than ourselves to help us find true peace. We weren't designed to do it alone. So how does John do it? He finally recognized that God was fully capable of handling anything we give him to handle, and that there is no true peace without that step. I thought God helps those who help themselves. How can he if uh, you're too busy handling things yourself? You see, God loves us so much. He gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. And then he raised him from the dead to prove that he was his son and to show us that we too could have eternal life. If he's willing to do all that 
without any help from us. Why should he want to see us carry our other burdens? I don't know. Well, he doesn't want us to carry them. And the good news is, we don't have to. He's more than capable of managing our lives. And we just let him. But we need to acknowledge that we need him. And then learn to trust him, to believe in him. Let him take control. Invite him to be the Lord of your life. So is that what John did? Hmm. Is that how he got that piece he was talking about? That's how. You want some of that? <sighs> Sounds like too good of a deal. <laughs> it's always about the deal. <laughs> but, you know, you're right. It is a good deal. Phil, why don't you go on back in the woods and talk to the Lord? Let him take controlling interest in your life. Begin to feel his power at work. Listen to Phil, Lord, just like you listened to John and to me so many times. God, are you there? Can you hear me? I think I need you, Lord. I'm getting really tired of doing this on my own. I'm just tired of being a control freak, God, and telling everybody what to do all the time. Just forgive me, God. Forgive me for being so self-centered and just such a jerk. Forgive me for that, will you? Could you do that? And just change me, Jesus. Okay? I give you controlling interest. Come and take control of my life, will you? And give me peace. I just give it to you. Is that a deal? We got a deal, Lord. Deal. It's a good deal.
this is pretty hard. I hate chemistry, and when I'm done with this class, I'm never getting near it again. But there is this guy in this class, and I, I kind of like him. He's, he's cute, but I don't even think he knows I exist. But, I don't know, college is so different. But lately, I, you know, I was thinking about even getting into teaching, because I, I remembered how much you know, it really meant to you, and it's, it's kind I love you too. Mom. I'm gonna go get Kyle and Dad. I'll be right back, Mom. John. Helen? Helen? at me. She said my name. So am I. Maybe it was God's gift to you. It looks like you finally found this does to that shirt. A little class working for you there, just like your little brother. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, John, we uh, we want you back at the firm. I want you back as controlling partner. Now, you don't have to answer to me right now. I think you got a lot on your mind and stuff. But all right, there's this one other thing I want to clear up. I uh, I need you to forgive me for the way I acted, for uh, putting the company ahead of Ellen. You forgive me for that? I, Kyle, take you, Cindy, to be my beloved wife. To have and to hold you. To honor and treasure you. To be by your side in sorrow and in joy. In sickness and in health. To love and cherish you always. I promise you this. With my heart. With my soul as long as we both shall live. This is my promise to you. Yes, it is beautiful, isn't it?